Okay, so in the last couple of videos of this series, we set up our SIP service through VoIP.ms and we connected that to our virtual router that we have running in ESX i 6.5. And so in this video, we are going to connect our call manager to that virtual router. Um, this is going to be a lot easier than the last couple of videos, so um, I am going to go ahead and get started. And I will get started in device, device settings, SIP profile. And I'm going to add a new one for this SIP trunk. I will name it VoIP MS. Then I will call it SIP trunk to Actually, you know what I'm going to call it? I'm going to call it cube. Let's call it trunk to cube router. Okay. This can all be left as default. I don't have to mess with any of this um the only thing i'm really worried about right now is this one because this will just tell me whether it's in service or not so i'll go ahead and click save okay and then i'm going to go to device trunk and i'll click find and i don't have any trunks right now so i'm going to add new trunk type sip trunk leave those as they are and I am going to call this cube as well um, leave it in the default device pool I'm going to use this off net because we're sending these calls offline And I will do PSTN access. I'll run on all active unified CM nodes, even though at this point I really only have <coughs> one going. Um, this can all stay the same. And then I am going to put in the IP address of the SIP trunk. So 10.0.0.21 and that should be it. Oh, nope. I do need a SIP profile and a security profile. I'm just going to use a, a cube one that we just created for the SIP profile and for SIP trunk security profile, non-secure SIP trunk profile. So I'm going to click save. And I'm going to click reset. Okay, and then I'm going to go to trunk. And even though we enabled <coughs> ping options, it's going to do this for a little bit for some reason. Um, so give that a couple minutes and then we'll refresh again. I'll put this on pause. Um, actually, um, I know what we'll do until then. We can create our first route patterns and our uh, route groups and our route lists. And I'm going to start with route groups. So I'm going to call routing, route hunt, route group. And I'm going to tell you why it's important to make these groups um, later in the video. Um, but because you actually can start sending calls out your SIP trunk without creating these route groups. Um, but um, later I'll show you why after we create them. Okay, so I'm going to call this VoIP.MS and we'll do top down. We still only have one trunk, but this is where you can have two trunks. Okay, so I clicked this and added to the route groups 
And it's uh, it's set. It's in the group. I'm going to go ahead and click save. And um, I'm going to go to call routing, route hunt, route list. Find, and there are not any. So I will click add new, and I will call this cube cube dash rl and click save and I'm going to run on all active CM nodes I'm going to add a route group and I'll choose the one we used earlier. I'm not going to mess with any of that right now. Click this again and click Save. Okay, so to recap, we have the, um, the route groups and that could be a collection of you know routes out of the gateway. We could add other devices to that. May, let's say that we have like um, a PRI. We could add that to the route group, and then we could make um, we could add those to this route list, and then it would go through all of the all the devices on each list. Um, so now the next step is to add a route pattern which will then use this route list. And I'll show you how that works. So we'll go to call routing, route hunt, and route pattern now. And the only one we have is 911 and that is there by default. So what we are gonna do is we are gonna, this is where you would add like all the um, wildcard digits for, um, uh, you know, numbers to go out the PSTN for all external numbers. Um, for this one, I'm just going to use one specific number to get calls outgoing, um, you know, running. Okay, so I clicked add new and I put in a Cisco tax phone number. So that's the only call, we'll, or only number we'll be able to call outbound. Um, and um, I am going to put that in uh, um, the internal partition for now. Um, actually, you know what? No, I'm going to make a new partition. So I'm going to cancel that and I'm going to go to call routing, class of control, partition. And I'm going to add a new one. And I will name this one 800 numbers. Actually, you know what, I'll call it toll free. Okay, so now I'll go to back to call routing, route hunt, route pattern. I'm going to add new, copy Cisco's phone number. route partition and I'm going to put it in toll free. So if you are not up to speed on partitions, I have a video about class of control partitions in calling search spaces. I'd encourage you to go look at that. Um, and I'm just gonna call this Cisco Tech. And this is where um, having this Route list is important because when I click save, it's going to give me a warning that updating this, having this in here and clicking save will automatically reset uh, a gateway or route list. So if I just had the gateway in here, then that gateway would get reset. But since it's a route list, the gateway is not going to get reset and lose registration to the call manager. Classification off net. Use calling parties external phone number mask. Good. And I can go ahead and click save. 
And here says any update to this route pattern automatically resets the associated gateway or route list. So it's okay to reset the route list. We would not want to reset the gateway, um, especially during production hours. I'm gonna click okay. And we have our route pattern. Um, now we need to enable our um, employees to be able to call that number. So I'm gonna go into call routing, class of control, and calling search space. And this is just kind of the standard one that I will be using. Um, and I am going to need to add the toll-free partition to this calling search space so that the number can be dialed by phones that are using the internal local calling search space. And I'm going to click Save. Now that we have that set up, let's go make sure that our SIP trunk is up and working. So I'm going to go to Device trunk. Boom. Time in ser full service, zero days, zero hours, nine minutes. Okay, so now it's the moment of truth. Our lab is complete. We have inbound calling and we should now be able to call Cisco Tech if, by dialing that number. So let's go ahead and give that a try. I have my Jabber registered with call manager. I'll paste in Cisco's number, click dial. Welcome to Cisco Technical Support. To report a network or environment down emergency, press 1. If you have an existing service request, press 2. For all other technical support... How cool is that? So through this series, we have built out our lab um, we built all this on an old crusty desktop. You know, we started out with ESXi, and then we got Call Manager installed, and then we got our virtual cube router set up, then we got our service set up through uh, VoIP.ms, and then we got our trunk um, registered uh, with Call Manager, and now we are sending calls out of that trunk um, to the PSTN uh, making phone calls. Um, that's uh, really cool. I mean, we have a fully functioning uh, call manager and uh, router on an old um, desktop computer from 2009. Um, so yeah, these are lab setups. They don't have to be expensive. You can uh, learn a lot. Now this is just a full sandbox. Um, and from here on, uh, we'll go into um, greater detail. We'll set up our local, long distance, international, um, our uh, route patterns and uh, set up the class of control um, and uh, we will have a fully functioning call manager um, set up. Uh, if you have any questions please go ahead and comment. If you like this video please hit like and subscribe. Uh, if you did not like this video please go ahead and tell me why. Maybe this was just terribly unclear and I need to uh, remake the video. In any case if you made it this far thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you have a great day.